Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of T-Seps and Fast Films. This short video was a quick start that should get you up to speed very quickly. Now, if you don't know Photoshop, you should take a second and view some of the Photoshop training videos. But if you know Photoshop and are fairly familiar with how it works, you should have no trouble installing T-Seps and doing a great set of separations right out of the box. Now, there are just some key points, and I'm going to cover them right now. First, you should download the program, obviously, and you should also download the 85-page reference manual. The program comes with the reference manual, and the reference manual is installed during the installation, but the separate reference manual gives you some quick start tips. The second thing you should do is, yes, take a second and read the manual. I don't mean read the whole thing, but just kind of print it out, take a look at it, glance through it, and if nothing else, at least read Section 1, the TSEPS Quick Reference Guide. It has good tips and ideas on how the program runs and how to set up Photoshop to work correctly with TSEPS, and you'll have good success if you do this. The third step is to install the program. If you're a Mac user, the download program is a typical Mac installer. If you're a PC user, the download is a zipped file that needs to be double clicked on and unzipped and make sure you know where you put the program. When you unzip the program, you get a typical PC based executable file called TSEPS. And by double clicking on the file name, it's a typical installation and you just follow the prompts. During the installation, TSEPS makes a folder on your hard disk called TSEPS, and in that folder are subfolders for the actions, for some of the routines that the program uses, for the drivers, for the unlocking program, the license file, the manual, and sample files. The next step is to load the program into Photoshop. TSEPS works in what's called the Actions Palette, and if the Actions Palette is not visible, click on the Window pull-down menu and select the word Actions. Now, Photoshop comes with some pre-done actions that you'll probably never use, and so we need to replace these actions with TSEPS. You click on the little tiny arrow to the right of the Actions palette, and one of the options is Replace Actions. If you load the actions, you'll be loading TSEPS below the default actions. You really want to replace these actions. Click on Replace Actions, and then you need to find on your hard disk the TSEPS folder, and in that folder is a subfolder called Actions. And there are two action files. One file is a shorter version of the program for when you're a power user. This is called the EX version of the program. Once you know the program, you don't need all the help screens popping up telling you what to do every time. But for now, you will load the normal version that does not have EX in the file name. And depending on your version of TSEPS, it could be version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. And we're going to double click on this file. This loads TSEPS in the actions palette. Now, the file might load in the non-button mode. If the program looks like this, this is incorrect. You must always run TSEPS in what's called button mode. Now, if by chance your actions palette was set to be wide, TSEPS then is like a deck of cards and is shuffled and all the buttons are really out of order. You must run TSEPS with the actions palette running narrow and tall. And that is how you put TSEPS in the actions palette in Photoshop. The next step is setting up Photoshop to display the image correctly. TSEPS builds what's called channel separations, and it builds a channel separation for each color, the underbase, lemon yellow, scarlet red, royal blue, light blue, etc. And we have told TSEPS to display the channels with dot gain applied, meaning what you see here is how it'll print at press, and it's a compensating for dot gain. But we also should tell Photoshop under the hood how to adjust for dot gain. If you go to the edit pull down menu, and this falls off the screen on the video capture, but one of your settings is color settings. Depending on your version of Photoshop, this may look different, but very similar. And these are quick settings that are covered in section one of the manual, but you want to set RGB for Apple RGB. And again, this is explained in the uh, Quick Start section of the manual. Set it for Apple RGB, set CMYK for swap newsprint, 30% dot gain. Set the gray window for a dot gain, 30%. The spot window for dot gain, 30%. And say OK. And we have just told Photoshop to display these channels with dot gain applied. Those are the quick Photoshop setups for TSEPs. 
The next step is understanding the type of artwork you need to run with TSEPs. TSEPs will run on JPEGs, PSD files, anything you can really open in Photoshop, TSEPs will separate. But if you're going to do separations for light and dark search, you must have two versions of the artwork that are identical in size and identical in the actual image, but have a different canvas color. The canvas in Photoshop is all the area around the image. And to do separations for light and dark shirts, there's really no magic. If you say to Photoshop TSEPs to separate this image for a black shirt, TSEPs will put white around the image because TSEPs says, I see white, and I think you want a block of white around the image. If you take an image like this and tell TSEPs you want to put it on a white shirt, TSEPs says, I see black. It doesn't know this is canvas. It, th it thinks this is a color. So to do work on light and dark shirts, we have to use two versions of the artwork and there's a variety of ways of getting here and one of the v one of the videos is on how to create the artwork to run with TSEPs so somewhere or the other you need two identical versions identical in size and identical in image and one version has black in the canvas area the way the print would look on a black shirt and one image has white in the canvas area the way the print would look on a white shirt there are also a couple more things you want to check when you're creating the artwork for TSEPs. It's very common for new users and even, even Photoshop power users to install TSEPs and immediately run a routine and wonder why the separations aren't correct. You must make sure your file is correct. That means, first of all, it must be in RGB mode. And the way you check it is go to the image pull down menu and come down to mode. And I purposely made this file CMYK so you could see it. You must make sure the file is in RGB color. I just clicked and I changed it to RGB. So the file has to be in RGB mode. Now, the file also has to be flattened. This file was built in layers, and we have lots of layers here. And this is typically how you build files in Photoshop, and this is how you build files with black and white backgrounds in layers. When you run a routine in TSEPs in layers, the Final steps will not be correct. There'll be empty channels, channels missing, you're going to get errors, and it's because the file was in layers. Don't assume because the file looks good and is RGB that it doesn't have layers. You always check your files when you get them from customers, and you must flatten the image. And flattening it means clicking on this arrow right here. But let me show you what happens if I, if I start deleting layers. I can delete layers. Let's just delete a few, and I'm going to show you what is a typical common issue you start playing around, you delete layers, and maybe you think because there's only one layer here that that's flat. That is not flattened. It must say background here. And let's go to history and undo this and come back to layers. It must say background. We're going to click on the arrow right here. We'll end. Let me move this over so you can see it because this is falling off the screen here. you must come down and flatten the image. And this just says discard hidden layers. I didn't turn all the layers back on. And there it is, background. It has to say background. It can't say layer 1 or layer 0. So the file must be in RGB mode. It must have no layers. And it cannot have any additional channels. Sometimes you run a separation, and maybe you didn't come back and delete all the channels. You stopped it in the middle, and you accidentally saved the file, and then you ran it again. And here's a file that has the RGB channels, but it has an alpha channel hanging out here. This is going to screw things up. So you always check and make sure there's no additional channels, that the file is flattened, and it's in RGB mode. The next step is to run a routine. The most popular routine is simulated process five color plus two whites. And there are videos on all of the various routines. And this is a quick start. And if I was going to run a job, this is probably the routine I would run first to see how well it did. And basically, you push a button. The program has lots of help screens built in. And you read the help screens and follow what they say. They will always say, though, to load the masked version first, which is the version of the artwork with black around it, and the unmasked version second. So we'll load the mass version first, and the program does hundreds of calculations. We'll load the unmasked version second. Now TSEPS is determining the print sequence, adjusting for dot gain, making separations that work using off-the-shelf ink colors of lemon yellow, scarlet red, royal blue. In fact, the program tells you the Pantone color, and you can use any brand of Plastisol ink. And what you just saw was magic. This program did the separations in less than 30 seconds, and it created what is called channel separations. 
There's the underbase, lemon yellow, scarlet red, royal blue, light blue, highlight white, and black. Yes, five color plus two whites is seven colors, but you don't print black ink on a black shirt, and you don't print two whites on a light shirt color. So really what you have is a six color separation. Let's look at this on a black shirt. There's the underbase, the lemon yellow, scarlet red, royal blue, light blue, highlight white. Finished, done. You can change the shirt color. We'll preview it on a cream shirt color. And now we don't print the highlight white, but we print the black.